Good morning. It is very nerve-wracking doing this with people in the sanctuary. It's been a while. It's so good to see this people in the pews today, and to be here on a special day like this is such a joy and a blessing to, I hope it's, it is to you, it certainly is to me, and it is to our church. Um, we will be recording this service, and it will be available on our YouTube channel um, for all of our church members who want to see that, and if you have family who weren't able to be here today, please feel free to share this with them. We hope they can celebrate with us in this way. Just one quick announcement for this morning. Um, we will be having church in the park again uh, next Sunday, also on the 25th, and we will be gathering back together in person for worship on November 1st. Um, so we're excited to do that. I want to keep our announcements brief this morning um, and ask as we step into this special time, if you would share a word of prayer with me. So let's pray together. Our gracious God, we give you thanks for a joyful day such as this. We pray for your Holy Spirit to be among us as we celebrate these young lives as they are dedicated to you. Bless these families, bless this church, and may we do the work that you call us to do with glad hearts. It is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Our gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for days such as these, days that are full of celebration and new beginnings. We pray that as we begin this new step of our lives that you would be with us, that each day we would grow in assurance of your love for us and your presence in our hearts. We thank you for the love that you have shared with us that stays with us at all times and at all moments. We thank you for your grace that shows that your love and your presence is with us even when we do not deserve it. And we thank you for your forgiveness that allows us a fresh start at each moment because of the sacrifice of your son. Gracious God, we ask that as we step into your promises today, that you would remind us at every moment that we are your children, that we are a part of your larger family 
that you call us to live lives worthy of your purpose. And we pray that as we seek to live in this way, that you would remind us that your son, Jesus Christ, had came to serve as our greatest example in ways of living and in loving. Bless these young people as they begin this new time in their lives. Bless their families as they support them. And bless this church as we work together to further your kingdom on earth. It is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. If you would join me on page 34, if you have one, if you are a young person that has one in your hand. As I say your name, if you would stand so that you can be recognized. Through confirmation and through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. I present these names for confirmation in the church. Cameron Claire Alley. Audrey Catherine Hale. Ella Brooks Harden. Elizabeth Jackson. Erin Marie Moore. Campbell Faith Owsley. Riley Juliana Panzer. Andrew Ernest Ramey. Joseph Roman. Nicholas Brooks Sweeney and Rowan Elizabeth Ziegler. And now I'm gonna ask you all to stand up again. And you'll see these questions on page 34 in your hymnal. Will you join me in the renunciation of sin and the profession of faith? On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, please answer, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. If so, answer, I do. And now to our families. Will you nurture these children in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example, they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, profess their faith openly, and lead a Christian life? If so, please answer, I will. And now on your bulletin, will you join me in our confirmational vows, congregational vows, which will mirror what we've just promised. With God's help, we will surround these persons with a community of love, support, and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in a way that leads to life. And now I will introduce Clinton Wheeler to you as he leads you through our affirmation of faith. Good morning. Like Rob said, I'm Clinton Wheeler and I'm the new youth minister here. Um, I know that I've met most of you, but if I haven't met you, I would love uh, to meet you and get to know you after the service. Um, I'm going to now lead you in the affirmation of faith and the responses are in the bulletin, uh, so if you'll follow me. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven 
is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We invite Riley to come forward. You may be seated. We invite Riley and her mother to come forward now for her baptism. Just kneel here. I told her I would put it on the back of her head not to mess her hair up. So, very special moment. Riley, Juliana, Panzer, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. And she'll return for her confirmation in just a few moments. Bless you. Thank you.
Scripture reading this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians, the first chapter, verses 3 through, three through 7. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in defense and confirmation of the gospel. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning, beloved. It's so good to see all of you today. So, confirmands, raise your hand for me so I can see where all of you are. To get the sermon started, I need some help, okay? Um, I am not up on my movies as well as you all are. Now, this week, in talking to Clinton, our new youth director, he is very much up on his movies, and he, is, uh, he told me he's kind of binge-watching The Avengers. Anybody like The Avengers? Y'all like The Avengers? No? Don't like them? All right. Well, maybe I just need to start a different place. I wonder if you can name, I'm going to name The Avengers, and if any of you, if I miss one of them, then help me with that. And maybe Clinton can help me. So I'm going to name the Avengers. Iron Man, Thor, the Incredible Hulk, Captain America, Ant-Man, the Black Panther, Spider-Man, and the Black Widow. So, is there any really smart... Comp- yes. Which one? Hawkeye. Missed Hawkeye. Is that the only one I missed? So who is the arch enemy of the Avengers, the superheroes? Anybody know that? I've only read this. Clinton, maybe you can help me out here. Is it Loki? No? Hmm? Okay. So anyway, there's this battle between good and evil. And the superheroes each have their superpowers... But as I understand it in the series, one of the rally calls of the whole series of movies is Avengers Assemble. I hope I'm right about that. I need to go back and watch. But it's a really cool concept of each one of these are superheroes with their individual powers, but they're called together to be partners to fight against evil and to basically demonstrate good or defend good in the world. So it's a really neat concept. So I want to use that just as an example for our confirmands of kind of a stretch, but what the church is like. You know that the name church, the word church, actually means assembly. and actually means those who are called out of the world to assemble to be a community of faith who are loyal to Jesus. So that's the meaning of church. And so on this very important today for you, I want us to think about what it means for you to be of this age and be responsible for your participation in the Christian life as a Christian disciple. And maybe it will remind all of us what that means as Christian disciples, followers of Jesus. So this is a big, big day. It's a big day in your life. This is a day you will always remember. And parents and grandparents, you started them on this journey. So this is a great day of accomplishment for you. You've gotten them this far. Everybody, all parents and grandparents say, hallelujah. <laughs> that wasn't very enthusiastic. But it's a hallelujah day because you've gotten them this far. It's like you have entrusted them with a treasure, and it's the treasure of faith and faithfulness. And so, confirmands now, what today means is that 
you are now becoming responsible for that treasure in your life. That's what really today is all about. You've been given a treasure. We call it grace, the grace of God. God is continually loving. God's continual loving action in all of our lives. God is gracious. And that's embodied in the flesh in Jesus. So we receive that treasure and we place our faith in Christ. And we have fellowship with God through Christ and the work of the Holy Spirit. So, parents, you have entrusted, maybe grandparents, you've entrusted this treasure, this legacy of faith and faithfulness, and confirmands now you are taking responsibility for that treasure in your life. So the question is, what will you do with that? Now, I I was confirmed... Uh, when I was in the fifth grade, you are in the seventh grade, you're much older and wiser. But I have to confess that we had classes and it was a lot of information and I, I kind of got some of it, some of it I didn't understand. And I never really was overly concerned about that in the fifth grade, but I knew something really significant in my life was happening. So I didn't have all the answers exactly straight, but I knew who God was, who Jesus was. I had that sense of the reverence for church and in church, that it was sacred, it was of God, and that this was something bigger than me. So my impression of my confirmation was, it was like a big yes to God, my chance to say yes to God. You see, God says yes to us first. God steps toward us and embraces us first. And that's why we baptize infants and people of all ages. That's God's yes to us, God's grace, God's love. So God steps toward us first. And so this is, at your age, this is your big yes to God. And I had a sense of that in the fifth grade. We had a great big tall preacher. He was taller than I am. He had dark hair, had these humongous hands. And I had this vivid memory of coming up like you are going to in just a moment. And I knelt, and his name was Brother Appleby. Brother Bill Appleby. Great big tall man, huge hands. And I remember that huge hand coming down on my head. I remember the weight of it. Maybe you'll feel the weight of some hands on your head in just a moment. And it's weighty. There's a significance to this moment. It's your big yes to God. And it's the church helping you say that yes. So that was my impression of of my experience of confirmation was that preacher's big, heavy hand on my head. And so that meant that I was a participant now in the life of the church in a different way. That I at age 11 in the 5th grade, and you now in the 7th grade, I was now responsible for choosing to follow Jesus, be a disciple, and to participate not only in the life of the church, but in God's life. I had been invited to participate in God's life. And so it was a big day and a big deal. And I remember the weightiness of it. And so your big yes today is about so many different things, so many layers to it. It's confirming in your life the work of God's grace, God's love in your life all along. It's about your saying yes to Jesus as a Christian disciple, a follower, and that As we all come to Christ, we look at that cross and we receive forgiveness of sins through His sacrifice. That's the centerpiece. That's why that big cross is in the centerpiece as the centerpiece of our sanctuary. So it's like a focal point for your whole life, that cross. So you're always oriented toward the cross. So we understand that our sins are forgiven and that God is a loving and forgiving God. Again, we call that grace. And so, well, what's my response going to be? 
And so through what God does, we then speak of our recognition of salvation, of being in fellowship with God now, forgiven of sins, and the promise of eternal life beyond this life. And you have a whole long life ahead of you. But we have that assurance of eternal life. And that treasure is ours now. Your parents, grandparents gave you that treasure as a gift, and now it's yours. You get to be responsible for it. So it's your big yes to God today. And that's important. That's weighty. So that's the first thing, your big yes to God. So the second thing is, as a participant in the life of God through Jesus, you are a partner now. Have you ever been a partner in something? Ever had a Kool-Aid stand with a friend down the street or some project that you were doing? You're now a partner. Did you hear what Scripture said? The Apostle Paul was speaking to the church. And he said, I thank God every day for you. And the partnership, the sharing in the gospel that we have together. So you're now a partner in the gospel. You're a participant in God's life and God's work. You may or may not have heard this. I read, ran across a story a long, long time ago about a little boy named Danny who lives in California. He was eight years old and he was given an assignment, explain God. So here's just a few pieces of Danny's answer to explain God. I wonder what you would write. Explain God. And so Danny says, God's very busy. God has lots of work to do. God has lots of work to do. But he has helpers. And so he said, one of God's main jobs is making people. He doesn't make big people. He makes little people. Because big people are too hard to make. He starts with little people. So one of God's big jobs is making people to keep the earth full of people. The second main job of God is to listen to prayers. And Danny said there must be a whole lot of noise in God's ears because people pray all the time, but God hears our prayers. And then he said the main helper of God is Jesus. And Jesus went on the road and he helped people and he forgave people and he healed people and he walked on water. And so Jesus was a great helper, a partner with God. Jesus went on the road and was trying to teach people uh, about God, but Danny said most people really didn't want to learn about God. And they treated Jesus very badly. They crucified him. And so Danny said, uh, so God, you know, Jesus said, you know, these people are wrong, but let's forgive them anyway. And at that point, after his crucifixion, God said, you don't have to go on the road anymore. You can come on home. So Jesus went to heaven. But Jesus is God's main helper. And so the exciting thing is with Jesus, we get to be God's helper. We get, a, get to be a partner with God. And so now you're responsible for that. You have all these opportunities to be a partner with God. That's part of what today's all about. So your big yes, you are a partner with God in all of God's work in the world. And the last thing I would say to you today is this, that it's a big adventure. I don't know what you like to do best, what your big adventures are. What would be your greatest big adventure? Well, the thing is today, as you are confirmed in the church today, you profess your faith in Christ, that I trust Christ for his love, his forgiveness, and my life is no longer my own. I, know, I don't just get to do whatever I want to do on my terms anymore. My life is part of something bigger than me now. Do you realize that? So you don't, it's not your life only anymore. It's you share it with God now, with Christ. And so, just like me in the fifth grade, you can never imagine what the adventures will be. And God will place before you these opportunities to get involved in God's work and be a partner with God in the world to do good and to, to share His love and even to offer prayers and even offer 
forgiveness and healing to people that are hurting. So you get caught up in that whole big adventure and you never know where it's going to take you. So I could have never imagined in the fifth grade all the places, all the adventures that I would have. And it's actually, this is the fun part. Because God will give you big adventures as you follow Jesus. So it took me to church camp, which was a great experience. I don't know if you all go to church camp. It kind of opened up my world and met all these new friends from all these other places. It was a great adventure. And then in college, I went to a Christian college and I met all these other people from all these places and they were Christians. And we began to share our life and our faith. It was a great adventure. I could have never imagined the friendships that I was going to have. Then I got to be a counselor at camp. And that was part of my calling into ministry, which became a whole other new path in the journey and the adventure. So you just never know where God will lead you. As you have, probably some of you have already worked in our our God's Grace food pantry. I did that where I grew up. And you get to meet people who are in need that don't have things like you do and don't know where their next meal is coming from. And so that service, we imitate Jesus, the servant. That's part of being a disciple. But there are other places I got to go. I got to go to southeast Kentucky and and I got to crawl up on a roof and re-roof an 80-year-old woman's house. And it was the most exciting thing that had ever happened in her life. She had a leaky roof in her little home and no way to fix it. And all these strange people came from all over the country and crawled up on her roof and fixed that. And I got to crawl up on the roof and swing a hammer. And it was a great adventure. So these adventures, you never know where God's going to lead you and the things that you'll do when you follow Jesus. I got to go to Nicaragua. And I saw little bitty children there with only a t-shirt on, no flip-flops, no shoes, just a t-shirt. And we fed over 800 children a day through the United Methodist Church. And it was rice and beans and a vegetable. And we served them on paper plates. And we noticed that the little children, even little bitty children, they would eat about a a quarter of the plate or a third of of the plate and then they would get another plate and cover it back up and you would see these little children walking down a dirt road and they were taking the rest of the plate back to their family because nobody at home had any food so they ate their little portion and they covered the plate up and they took it home and so I have that image of those children walking on those dirt roads back home How many of you like Coca-Colas or sodas? I don't even know how much a soda costs now, probably close to $2. The people in Nicaragua, they live on less than a dollar a day. The whole family, can you imagine, less than the cost of a Coke is what they live on every day. So in this adventure with Jesus, I got to go down there and we served the little children, but then they would take part of their plate home. Never saw that before. So it changed how I viewed a lot of things. It changed how I looked at my plate at home or at a restaurant when I got home. I had this big full plate. And so that's what Jesus does for you. And so last, I I got to go to Haiti after an earthquake and we worked on a school. We rebuilt a school and the school was the only standing building left that was intact in the community but it had cracks in the walls, so we worked on the school so that the community had a safe place to gather. So you never know what adventure Jesus is going to give you from this point forward, but you are a participant. And what I want you to hear today is that by answering these vows, saying your big yes to God and to the church, you say, I want to be part of the big adventure of Jesus. And I know that I am responsible. My life is no longer just mine. I don't get just to do anything I want just for me anymore because I follow Jesus. So it's a big adventure. And by saying your big yeses today, I can't wait to see where God will lead you and the adventures that you will have. 
So Paul says in that scripture that I am convinced, I have confidence that he who began a good work in you, good stuff in your life, will bring it to completion in the end. So there's a whole lot of new good adventures to come. And God will do good things through your life. And so today is a great big day of big yeses to God. And we love you and we pray God's blessings upon all of you. So thank you for being here and being part of this moment in your life, your journey, but in the larger life of God in the church. So thank you and bless you. So in just a moment, we're going to call each of you up for our confirmation time. We spoke about this earlier, uh, but we will call your name and we will invite you to the place where your name is and the families are invited as well. As Dr. Kevin said, we, you will place your hand, we'll place our hands on uh, your confirmand and celebrate this time with them. Uh, not to take anything away from doc, what Dr. Kevin said, but I mentioned to some of you this week and as I've met with you, I've known some of you since you were so small you couldn't see over this, uh, over this rail. Um, and just personally, I want to say to you, and on behalf of the church, congratulations. Um, we think this is a wonderful day, um, and I hope that you know how wonderful a day this is, not just for you, uh, but also for our church, that you'll be a part of it like this, okay? So I'll first invite uh, Cameron Alley and her family, if you'll join us up. Cameron Claire Alley, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born of water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Audrey Catherine Hale. Let me say, after the conclusion of our service, um, AK will be baptized in Wesley Chapel, and you are all invited to come share in that moment with her and her family, and we hope that you will. Place your hand upon her. Audrey Catherine Hale, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born of water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Ella, pardon if you'll come join us up here and your family. Ella Brooks Harden, may the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born of water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Elizabeth Jackson and her family, if you'll join us. And just place your hand on her where you can reach. There you go. 
Elizabeth Jackson, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born of water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Aaron Moore, if you'll come. See if you can get to a place where you can, there we go, lay hands on her. Aaron Marie Moore, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born of water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Riley Panzer, you can come join us. Riley Juliana Panzer, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born of water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. And Faith Owsley, if you'll come. Let's get where he can lay a hand. Campbell Faith Owsley, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born of water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Andrew? Would you come, please? Andrew Ernest Ramey, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born of water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Joseph Roman. Joseph Roman, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born of water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Nick Sweeney.
Nicholas Brooks Sweeney, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born of water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. And Rowan Ziegler. Rowan Elizabeth Ziegler, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born of water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. So as you have uh, said yes to these vows this morning and declared your faith before the church, now that you begin this life of faith, know that you do this in conjunction and along with the church. And so now we will step into the time where we declare our membership vows to the church, both to the larger, ch all, uh, to the larger church, to the United Methodist Church, and to this church. So will our confirmands please stand? And if you'd like to join us, join us on page 38, if, if you, but y'all also, uh, you can also repeat the answers that I encourage you to give. As, as members of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, answer, I will. As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, answer, I will. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. And on behalf of our congregation, I respond to your vows this way. We all give thanks for, that, for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love, and as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Would you pray with me? God of all grace, you have called us to eternal glory in Jesus Christ. And we ask that who has established you and we may strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in our lives through grace and peace. It is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to go next door to Wesley Chapel for uh, Alder Kate's baptism. And so, again, if you would like to participate in that, we would certainly welcome you to do that. Thank you for being here this morning. Again, just another reminder, we'll be in the park again on October, uh, next Sunday, October the 4th, then the last Sunday of October the 25th. And then on November 1st, we'll start an informal service in the gym at 9 o'clock. So if you like the park or informal worship, uh, that will be at 9 o'clock in the gym and then 10.55 here uh, in the sanctuary. We've really worked hard to try to keep everyone safe, and this is a sustainable way that we can, once we start worship, we can sustain it and move forward from here. And so we look forward to seeing you in worship uh, with every opportunity that we have to gather together.
So thank you again for being here. And let's stand for our benediction. God, pour out your blessing upon us. Guide our steps each day to be faithful to the vows that we make. And remind us that we become the promises that we keep. And so fill our hearts and minds with uh, the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may have faith and trust in you, that we may walk daily as instruments of your love and peace, and may share the goodness of your grace and the story of grace with all those whom we encounter each day and in our journey. And so now go in peace, and may the peace of Christ rule in your hearts always. Grace and peace to you. Amen. Bless you. Thank you for being here.